The two leading candidates to be the next speaker are Jim Jordan of Ohio, the current chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, and Steve Scalise of Louisiana, the current House Majority Leader. As of now, neither Jordan nor Scalise has claimed to have the magic 218 votes required to become the speaker. Scalise has been working the phones and courting GOP lawmakers privately, while Jordan is publicly making the case that he is the best messenger for the Republican Party ahead of the 2024 election, where his close ally, Donald Trump, is the frontrunner for the presidential nomination. But in the last day or so, a couple of prominent Republicans have been issuing a stark warning about Jim Jordan, specifically about his role in attempting to overturn the presidential election of 2020. Jim Jordan knew more about what Donald Trump had planned for January 6th than any other member of the House of Representatives. Jim Jordan was involved, was part of the conspiracy in which Donald Trump was engaged as he attempted to overturn the election. That was former Congresswoman Liz Cheney of Wyoming, vice chair of the January 6th Select Committee, on Wednesday in Minnesota. But, but Cheney is not the only Republican sounding the alarm. Here is Cassidy Hutchinson, the former top aide to White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows of the Trump White House, and of course the star witness of the January 6th Committee's public hearings. But Jim Jordan was privy to nearly everything, if not everything, about and pertaining to January 6. Hmm. Jim Jordan can't be trusted with the Constitution. Jim Jordan scored former President Trump's endorsement early this morning, which should come as no surprise to anyone if you take a closer look at the great lengths that Jordan went to to try to keep Trump in power after he lost the election. Here is Jordan in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, attending a Stop the Steal rally two days after Election Day. In the weeks and months after that, Jordan went on various right-wing media outlets where he attempted to sow distrust in the 2020 election and made baseless claims of election fraud. It's exactly what the Democrats wanted. They knew President Trump was going to win on election night, but they wanted to keep looking for and finding and counting ballots until they got over the top. Jordan's name appears throughout the bipartisan report from the House Select Committee investigating January 6. The report says that Jordan attended numerous post-election meetings with senior White House officials and Rudy Giuliani discussing how to challenge the election results. The report also details how Jordan led a conference call on January 2nd discussing how to delay that joint session of Congress on January 6 to certify the electoral vote. Jordan and Trump spoke later that night for 18 minutes, according to the report. The night before January 6, Jim Jordan texted the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows. And Jordan said that Vice President Pence, quote, should call out all electoral votes that he believes are unconstitutional as no electoral votes at all, unquote. We know that is a power that the Vice President does not actually have. On January 6, Jordan talked to President Trump on the phone at least twice. In the January 6th committee's final report, the committee concluded that Jordan was a, quote, significant player in the conspiracy who, quote, appears to have had materially relevant communications with Donald Trump or others in the White House. But the committee did not know about the substance of those communications because Jordan, quote, failed to comply with the select committee's subpoenas, unquote. So what happens to the country? if Jim Jordan is elected Speaker of the House. Former Congresswoman Liz Cheney paints a pretty dire picture. If the Republicans decide that Jim Jordan should be the Speaker of the House, there would no longer be any possible way to argue that a group of elected Republicans could be counted on to defend the Constitution. CNN reached out to Jordan's office for a reaction to these comments from Cheney and Hutchinson and from the January 6th Select Committee. We did not get a response. If we get one, we will share it with you. CNN's Lauren Fox starts off our coverage today with a closer look at how the man once called a legislative 
terrorist by former Republican House Speaker John Boehner of his fellow state of Ohio, has become a frontrunner for the speakership. And look, I like the job I got now. I never wanted to do this job, but someone has to, um, who, can, who can bring the team together and can go communicate to the country. Jim Jordan, once a thorn in the side of GOP leaders, now vying to lead them as House Speaker after Kevin McCarthy was booted from the role. I disagree with, you know, what, what took place, but those guys are friends of mine. The Ohio congressman, the chairman of the powerful Judiciary Committee. The fix is in. And known for his aggressive pursuit of an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. This inquiry is so darn important. It boosted his authority within the GOP conference and earned him the endorsement of Donald Trump. Jordan voted against certifying the 2020 election. For Americans instinctively know there was something wrong with this election. And was involved in conversations with the White House around the time of January 6th, including a 10-minute call with Trump the morning of the attack. Uh, I talked to the president a couple times that day, but I don't remember the times. Concerns that are out there. Republicans nominated him to the January 6th committee, but then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected him. Prior to his time in Congress, Jordan served as an assistant coach for Ohio State's wrestling program. Coming under fire after several former wrestlers claimed Jordan knew about the sexual abuse allegations involving team doctor Richard Strauss. In 2020, six former wrestlers told CNN they were present when Jordan heard of or responded to sexual misconduct complaints about the doctor. Oh, he, he heard what I said. Jordan has emphatically denied that he knew anything about Strauss's abuse when he worked at Ohio State between 1987 and 1995. Strauss died by suicide in 2005. Look, if I'd have known there was some kind of problem, some kind of abuse, I'd have, I'd have helped out our, our athletes. What they're saying is just not true. An independent report did not specifically name Jordan or any wrestling coach at Ohio State. But it did say 22 coaches were aware of rumors and complaints about Strauss. On Capitol Hill, Jordan made a name for himself during the Benghazi hearings. Where did the false narrative start? Started with you, Madam Secretary. But he also gained a reputation as an agitator for party leaders. As a founding member of the House Freedom Caucus, he was part of the group that often tangled with then-Speaker John Boehner, prompting Boehner to later call him a legislative terrorist. Now, Jordan says as speaker, he's the only one that will be able to unite a deeply divided party. I think I can do that. If I didn't think I could do that, I wouldn't run. Lauren Fox, CNN, Capitol Hill. And our thanks to Lauren Fox on Capitol Hill for that. Joining us now to discuss, Democratic Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren of California and Republican former Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, who both served together on the House January 6th Select Committee. Uh, Congressman Kinzinger, let me start with um, you, uh, do you share the opinion of Congresswoman Cheney and Cassidy Hutchinson that Jim Jordan uh, is not committed to democracy and the Constitution? I absolutely do. I mean, all you have to do is look at his record, look at January 6th and everything leading up to that. Look at, I think you played the soundbite where he says, you know, how, how did, in essence, how did 74 million people not be enough to win an election. So we're going to keep looking until we find something. Well, that's not how the Constitution works. And the thing you need to understand about Jim Jordan is he's a true believer, but he truly believes that the Democrats or the left is an enemy of America and he will do anything, even extra constitutionally, to defeat them. That's his general belief. I would put him in the camp of Christian nationalists where he believes he's truly fighting these dark forces and the Constitution in some cases is an impediment uh, to him being able to fight those forces. It's very dangerous for this country, very dangerous for the House. And I'll just say this to my Republican colleagues, really dangerous to the future of the Republican Party, especially if you're the party that still ascribes to Lincoln, Reagan, et cetera. Congresswoman Lofgren, you just heard from Congressman Kinzinger uh, about what his view of what uh, Jim Jordan thinks about the left. That's you. What do, what do, what do you think? Yeah. Well, it's not true. I mean, Adam can tell you that our bipartisan January 6th committee worked very professionally and in an apolitical way to get to the truth of what happened on January 6th and leading up to it. And what we found, I agree with Adam, I mean, um, uh, Jordan was up to his neck in this plot for, 
for all, all we could see. He refused to provide us the information we needed, but uh, it looked from the contacts that we could identify that he was hev heavily involved in the plot to overturn the election, overturn the Constitution. So I don't think uh, that's what America needs. And uh, certainly uh, I take offense to the idea that I'm not patriotic. I work hard to defend the Constitution.